Hi everyone, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this episode, I'm going to show you how to play the two to eight player game Suro by Calliope Games. So join me at the table, and let's take a look at how you set up to play. First, we need to lay out the game board, and then each player is going to take a marker. And in this example, we're setting up a three player game. There are several path tiles, and these should be shuffled and placed in a face down stack. There is also a dragon tile, but you keep that separate. Each player is now dealt three path tiles, and you can look at your own, but you want to keep them a secret from your opponents. Now, starting with the oldest player and going clockwise around the table, each player will be able to place their start marker on the board. You do this by placing your marker on any one of the many white lines that go along the outside edge of the game board. So I might place mine right here. My opponent then picks another available line. So they could go adjacent to me, or they could go much farther away, if they choose. Once all players have placed their markers on the board, we're now ready to begin playing. The game will take place over several turns, and on your turn, you will pick one of your path tiles to play to the board. You will then move any affected markers, and then, as long as there are tiles left in the stack, you will draw a new one and add it to your hand. But let's start at the beginning by looking at how you play a path tile to the board. You must always place your chosen path tile in an empty space adjacent to your marker. You then move your marker along the path that you just connected it to, stopping at the edge of the tile you placed. Although there are several paths marked on each tile, and they sometimes cross one another, you must follow the natural line of the path you are connected to. So I would have to go this way. I couldn't come to the middle of the tile and then change direction and go over here. Now when placing a tile, you can rotate it in any one of the four different directions. Just keep in mind you're not allowed to place the tile in such a way that it would lead your marker off the board, like this would do. Because that is how you get eliminated from the game. Now remember what I said, you may not willingly play a path tile that would lead your marker off of the board, but eventually you may have no choice no matter which path tile you play or how you turn it, all paths will lead you off the board and eliminate you from the game, in which case you have no choice. You will have to play one of those tiles and then you're out. So the object of the game is to be the only player with a marker still on the board. Now after you've placed your tile and moved your marker, you then draw a new tile and add it to your hand. Then the next player does the same thing. They place one of their tiles, move their marker, and draw a new tile. And so it will go. But eventually, you may have to place a tile that connects to another player's marker. Let's advance the game forward a little bit. Join me at the table, and I'll show you how that works. So here I am placing my tile, and of course it connects up to the path that my marker is on. But it's also connecting my opponent to a path. I have to resolve my own marker first, so I'll travel along the path, come to the end of the tile I place, but notice the path continues, so I have to continue as well, until I can't go any farther. Now I move my opponent's pieces that were affected. Green is going to have to travel along this path, and it keeps going and going until it's off the board. So while you can't willingly place a path tile that would remove your own piece from the board, you can and should place them so that your opponents are removed from the game, because of course that's going to help you win. Now once a player has been eliminated, all of their remaining path tiles are then shuffled back into the draw deck. There is an advanced rule you can choose to play with that says if you're responsible for eliminating a player from the game, you can look through their path tiles and exchange any of your own for any that they have that you would prefer, and then all of the remaining path tiles get shuffled back into the draw deck. But now let's take a moment and look at this dragon tile and see what it's used for. There are enough tiles included with the game to cover the entire game board, but remember each player will be holding three tiles, and depending on the number of players, this means that after placing your tile and moving your marker, you may go to draw a new tile and there's none left. So this means that I take the dragon tile and place it face up in front of me. Now the next player would take their turn putting down a tile, moving their marker, and of course there's still no tiles for them to draw either. But they don't take my dragon tile. Now this acts as a reminder that I was the first player who tried to draw a tile and couldn't. And that also means that as soon as more tiles become available, I'll be able to draw from them first. Now how could that happen? Well let's say the yellow player had no choice but to play a tile that would eliminate them from the game. Their remaining tiles would get shuffled up and then placed into a new draw pile. 
And right away, even if it's not my turn, because I have the dragon tile and less than three tiles in my hand, I get to take one off the top and add it to my hand. Now the next player also has less than three, so they would take the next tile. And let's say for a moment we had another player at the table and they had less than three tiles. Well, there's none more here for them to draw. So instead, I would pass the dragon tile to them as a reminder that as soon as one of the other players gets eliminated and more tiles are here, they would draw first. If you get eliminated from the game while holding the dragon, then you pass the dragon to the next player who has less than three tiles in their hand. So now the eliminated player's single remaining tile is added to the draw pile, which in this case, makes it the only tile in that stack. So our player who just claimed the dragon now immediately draws this tile and adds it to their hand. Once all remaining players at the table again have three tiles in their hand, instead of passing the dragon, it is simply set aside until it is needed again later when someone goes to draw and there are no tiles left. So as I said, if there's one player on the board and everyone else has been eliminated, that player is the winner. It's also possible that after placing all of the tiles, there's more than one marker still in play. In that case, those players share the victory. It's even possible to place a tile in such a way that all remaining markers are immediately removed from the board. In that case, those markers that were just removed share the victory as well. But join me at the table. I want to show you one other way that you can be eliminated in this game. If you place a tile in such a way that your marker now follows a path that leads directly into another player, then both you and that other player are immediately eliminated. And that's how you play Suro. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. And I hope you'll subscribe to our channel because in an upcoming show, I'm gonna be joined by my two kids and we're gonna play the game, giving you another chance to see how this game works. But until the next episode, Thanks for watching.